on the final weekend of the election campaign, Reform UK drops candidates accused of making offensive remarks and takes offence itself at the actions of two broadcasters. Nigel Farage says he and his party have been treated unfairly by Channel 4 and the BBC. Also tonight, growing reports of postal vote delays and what you should do if you haven't had yours. A major new search for missing teenager Jay Slater finds no sign of him almost two weeks after he vanished in Tenerife. And as the Euros knockout competition begins, Gareth Southgate says... My job is to keep this juggernaut on track and uh, I'm relishing that challenge. With just five days to go before the general election, Reform UK has dropped its support for three candidates accused of making offensive statements. Nigel Farage's party has also accused two broadcasters of acting improperly. It's reported Channel 4 to the election's watchdog and to the police for alleged election interference. And Mr Farage has refused to appear on the BBC tomorrow, claiming that its question time special last night was rigged. Here's our political reporter, Jasmine Cameron Chileshi. Nigel Farage wants to distance himself from the wave of allegations engulfing his party. Are you, are you going to withdraw your support from these people? I wouldn't want anything to do with them. Reform has today withdrawn support for three of its candidates, alleged to have made xenophobic remarks on social media. The move came as the party faced backlash after undercover footage showed reform supporters allegedly making racist, homophobic and Islamophobic remarks, including towards the PM. I'm always a bit of Tory, but I'm talking, what a noise that is. You know, it was good, is it? Andrew Parker won in 2016. one of the individuals shown, has since apologised, but Mr Farage has accused him of being an actor and reported Channel 4 to the Electoral Commission. A deliberate attempt to smear us. It's almost, when well, you look at it, what he said is almost unbelievable. In a statement, Channel 4 say they stand by their reporting and that they did not pay Mr Parker or anyone else in their report. So good to see you. Yeah. The Prime Minister has expressed his anger over the alleged remarks and the Conservatives have questioned the culture of the Reform Party. The leadership of Reform should be focusing on getting racist and misogynistic views out of their candidates, out of the people they're putting up uh, for uh, election uh, in a few days' time and sorting their own house out rather than spreading somewhat bizarre conspiracy theories. Meanwhile, Labour has accused Mr Farage of poor leadership. It is horrifying, it's simply disturbing some of the, the comments, the uh, misogyny, the racism that we're hearing from uh, reform candidates, let alone from activists. And we need to see leadership from Nigel Farage. Following Friday's debate, Mr Farage has described the BBC Question Time audience as dishonest and says he won't appear on the broadcaster's Sunday morning programme without an apology. On social media, he wrote, I'm refusing until the BBC apologises for their dishonest question time audience. Our state broadcaster has behaved like a political actor throughout this election. The BBC has denied these allegations, arguing that its audience was barely representative. Mr Farage has been keen to prove that his party can unify the public rather than divide. But he faces an uphill battle as the row over his candidates and vetting processes shows no sign of letting up. Jasmine Cameron Chileshi, ITV News. Well, as the election draws near, there have been increasing reports of voters who applied for postal ballots who have not yet received them. The Electoral Commission says it will look into the issue after polling day. Well, Chris Jepson is here. And Chris, that obviously won't help anyone who struggles to vote next week. Well, no, with only five days to go, you can imagine this is causing anxiety for some voters. Um, I've been speaking to two from different ends of the country. Sam Williams from Devon missed out because his postal vote failed to arrive before he went on holiday to France. And Scott Brown, who's a politics uh, lecturer from Dundee, he's flying to Australia tomorrow and says he feels disenfranchised. I always tell my students that it's really important to vote uh, and to make sure you're, you're registered to vote in the right place. And I, I followed all the steps. The deadline was set out. There was no implication um, you know, that we had to apply significantly earlier in order to guarantee. So I feel that there are questions to be answered. Now, Scotland's one of the worst affected areas with 
Street Council's opening emergency centres this weekend to allow residents to cast their vote ahead of polling day or have their postal vote uh, reissued. Uh, the Royal Mail told us that there is no backlog in their system uh, and the Electoral Commission said that anyone who um, applied for a postal vote on time should receive theirs in the coming days but they said if you haven't uh, received it uh, that you should request a replacement in person from your local authority. This can be done up to 5pm on polling day and they must take ID and can authorise somebody uh, else to collect it on their behalf. Now the Electoral Commission says it's going to research with voters uh, after the election uh, on what's happened with the postal voting system but of course for many people that will just be too late. Yeah, absolutely. Chris, thank you. Next, a major new search in Tenerife for the missing British teenager Jay Slater has so far failed to find any trace of him. Locals and tourists with strong walking or climbing experience were asked to help rescue teams comb through dense mountain terrain where Jay disappeared almost two weeks ago. From Tenerife, Just Stokes reports. As dawn broke over the mountains, another day of searching was set to begin. It's been 13 days since Jay Slater vanished here in Tenerife. Today, what officials called a mass search formed near Masca after a call went out to all able volunteers familiar with the area. Few would come in the end, but those who did were ready to help. It's important if we are able to, to find him, you know, because he's... he's I, I, I think about the family and so they must be very anxious, you know, and very nervous. And if I can give a hand, that would help. The focus was on Jay's last known contact point, a ravine where his phone last recorded his location, as officials prepared to retrace his steps. Today will consist of all the personnel coming here for a thorough search because we need to rule out areas and be sure they are well looked at. Jay had travelled from a music festival in the south of the island to an Airbnb in the north. Two men were reported to have driven him here, but after questioning, police have since described them both as irrelevant to the case. Jay's family, although absent from the official search, were thankful for everyone who helped. I admire them for their strength, um, because yeah, it's, so, it's such a tough, tough situation. Um, I'm really proud of them, I really am. They're, they're doing amazing, they really are. The mystery surrounding this disappearance continues to puzzle those looking for answers, with some now questioning how long this continuous search can go on. Joshua Stokes, ITV News, Tenerife. A man has died and seven others are in hospital after taking a sedative drug in Stockton on Tees. Cleveland police are warning of a potentially contaminated batch of the drug called Zopiclone. They say it could cause significant illness or lead to an overdose. A former Wandsworth prison guard has been arrested after a video emerged allegedly showing a woman having sex with an inmate in a jail cell. The guard has been detained on suspicion of misconduct in public office. And it's been revealed that Banksy was behind a guerrilla art stunt at Glastonbury last night. The band Idol says it was the famous street artist who created an inflatable boat filled with dummy migrants, which sailed over the crowd during their show. To the Euros now, and England, still smarting from criticism over their recent performances, have been in training ahead of tomorrow's crucial knockout match against Slovakia. This afternoon, manager Gareth Southgate said England are there to win. Our sports editor Steve Scott reports on the big build-up from Germany. All 26 Lions were prowling on the grass today, but despite a full squad to choose from, as a national leader in election week, appropriately, it seems the man's not for turning. That means Cole Palmer, Anthony Gordon and others will have to stay patient for their chance to shine. You know, we're still unbeaten, uh, finished top of the group, and the boys know that they they can play to a, a higher level, so I think that's a, that's a positive thing. It's been a difficult week for Gareth Southgate, the target of open vitriol. You sense the love affair is turning sour, but he remains resolute. You know, I've come here to try and win a tournament. Um, we've completed the first phase of that. My job is to keep this juggernaut on track, and um, I'm relishing that challenge. 
England fans want to believe the undoubted talent is about to explode into life. We get through this. Italy, Switzerland. I'm not scared of them. Like I don't, I don't think it'd be easy, but I'm not scared of them. Tomorrow, carry on through. Win it. <laughs> Come on, the boys. <laughs> Slovakia may well be ranked 40 places lower than England, but that's still much higher than Slovenia, who the three Lions struggled to tame in their last group game. What's more, they've already taken the considerable scalp of Belgium. It will not be a straightforward evening here. The Slovakians have already said, despite the fact they've never beaten England before, now is the perfect time to change that. If Southgate's team doesn't click soon, then the dream to lay a certain date to rest will continue for another couple of years, at least. Steve Scott, ITV News, Gelsenkirch. Well, if England get through against Slovakia tomorrow, they would play either Italy or Switzerland next. They are playing right now in the first of the knockout matches, and the defending champions Italy are in trouble. They fell behind to a goal from Nottingham Forest Romo Frola. High temperatures affected the first ever Italian start to cycling's Tour de France. British veteran Mark Cavendish was badly affected by the heat. The record 34-time stage winner could only finish 39 minutes behind the leader on the 200-mile stage from Florence to Rimini. The opening stage was won by Frenchman Roman Bardas. And finally, more than a million people gathered in the capital today for the UK's biggest pride parade. Mayor Sadiq Khan led the procession of over 32,000 LGBTQ plus people from Hyde Park to Trafalgar Square. Performances are continuing into the evening across five stages. And that's it. We're back with more after the football at 10.30. Hope you enjoy your evening from all of us on the team. Bye-bye.